Hello. So I spent most of this dismal week puttering around with Force Science um, and playing video games, of course. So if you played the old version of Force Science, uh, it's still available if you wanted to putter around with it and just see what I'm talking about, but it was basically unplayable. Uh, it actually had a pretty good... Once you, once you got over the learning cliff, it had some pretty good stuff deep inside, but it had some serious, serious flaws in both the UI and in the core design. So when I decided I wanted to tackle it again, I started over from scratch, and I decided that I would focus on usability. Uh, and at first I was like, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to keep the same level of depth. Um, but it turns out not only can I keep the same level of depth, but by improving the usability, I actually make it much more, uh, much, much more deep. More things can happen, can emerge, uh, in ways that are much more straightforward and don't actually screw the player up. So we've just gotten uh, a mission to put in Grandfather's Bench, so let's go ahead and do that. Just as before, science production like this produces these notes, and uh, these notes then have to be processed into a paper or some other type of thing. Uh, they do no good as notes. And here, Winter is going to volunteer to process all of those using uh, the desk, this one here. So let's put that down, uh, let's say here. You have to pardon the first person control. It's still a little bit rough. I haven't polished it at all. So in the previous version, setting up this workflow to put those to put notes from here to here would have been a bit of an undertaking. You'd click on this desk and then a menu would pop up and then you click on the menu and then you click again and then you click over here. Now it's very sim simple. There's only two things that you can do. And the first one is you can click on it and then click somewhere else. And that sets up the route and you can see how they're coming over. The other thing you can do is you can mouse wheel, and if you look over there on the right, you can mouse wheel on these to change their setting. You can also use page up and page down um, if you don't have a mouse wheel. So there's no longer any menus at all. It's all just 100% either click and then click somewhere else or mouse wheel. That's It's very, very straightforward. But as it turns out, that actually adds a surprising amount of complexity to this, uh, to this data side. In the previous version of the game, all of the complexity was on the science production side, where you had you know, giant computer banks that needed electricity and rocket launch pads that needed fuel and all sorts of other stuff, and you had to get all that working. And it was kind of annoying, and that was kind of the point. But the data side was always pretty easy. You just put down a whole bunch of desks. Uh, and it was kind of, uh, I was trying to find a way to make that more interesting, and I wasn't getting anywhere, but I did figure out a way to make it more interesting. So in this version of the game, it's much more interesting. And one of the ways it's interesting is you can no longer set up arbitrary discards. You can no longer set up arbitrary routes. Uh, this advanced writing desk will never be able to pipe to 18 other sources, depending on various configurations of things. All it does is discard over to the left here and the path is so long that they get discarded before they even get here. But if we put another desk here, it'll catch those discards. And in that way, we can have two or three outputs, depending on how things are configured. Uh, and it works pretty well, at least in theory. But the other thing worth, note, worth noting is that this is a specific range. It always discards one tile to the left. You can't change that. And there are other considerations. One of these considerations you can see over here it's, uh, this desk will work fine, but it will work better if you put it in an office uh, with a door and a window. It can either be a 2x1 office or a 2x2 office, and that gives you a 50% boost. Notice that the yellow discard would actually discard out of the wall, out of the office through the wall. And that's on purpose, because you could have another desk over here. See? Mmm. And this means that your configuration on the data side can get quite complex. Now, unfortunately, if you remember, uh, I haven't finished integrating this, so pardon me pausing and, and stopping and restarting here, but if you remember the old version of the game, the walls were decorative. On the back end, there was really no way for me to um, query for walls or for coverage or any of that stuff. It was super expensive and difficult. Uh, and on the front end, you wouldn't place walls. You'd, like, summon a wall tile that floated, and you had to rotate it and pick a slot. It was just, just miserable. Uh, now it's a lot easier. You just place the walls as you'd like. No need to worry about rotating stuff or anything like that. Just put down the walls however you want them to be. 
Oh, I made a mistake. That's fine. Just hold control and delete the walls. It's pretty easy. And you remember we put our desk over here? We can easily build a little office for it. And then over here we might have another office. Uh, and maybe maybe over here we've actually got a big office like this. Uh, delete that tile. And um, you know maybe we've got some bathrooms and we therefore need to have little stalls. And you can see how much faster this is uh, than having to select things and rotate things and all that nonsense that used to be necessary. Now I haven't got to the part where we can put in doors or windows or anything like that yet, but wall painting is quite a lot faster than it used to be. And because walls are now a critical part of the game, uh, how the game processes, it's important for you to figure out the kind of layout that you'd like to have. Uh, and it's going to be fun. There's lots of options as to how this works. And uh, I'm looking forward to exploring this kind of play. Unfortunately, it's still nowhere near being ready. Um, it's, not process it's not progressing very fast, mostly because I'm really bad at winter. Uh, you may have noticed that the quality of my videos goes down sharply around December and it stays low until about April. Uh, that's how things work, but I'll try. Have a nice one.